Hi, my name is Keith Asen. I'm an ONTAP evangelist within the product management group here at NetApp. This is part two of a three-part series on the newest release of ONTAP, ONTAP 9.11.1. If you missed part one, go look for it. We spoke there about all of the security and compliance functionality we released in this newest release. This is part two. We're gonna focus on enhancements to high performance and deployment flexibility, and watch for part three shortly, which covers integrated data protection and ease of use. As you can see, we've delivered a number of enhancements across all of those categories. Let's dive into it. So when we talk about high performance workloads, it's not just about workloads that require low latency or high IOPS. It may also be workloads that have a very high file counts or high capacity environments as well. We consider all of those high performance environments. But let's start with enhancements specifically to our low latency block-based protocols. In ONTAP 9.11.1, we can do LUN to NVMe namespace transition very, very rapidly. So on ONTAP, we can do this migration of, of changing a block-based SCSI LUN, either iSCSI or fiber channel, and convert it in place over to an NVMe namespace. This is very, very fast, and all we have to do is change the metadata that regards the data itself. There's no data migration at all. So the, the data only needs to be unmounted for a very short period of time. Now, the best thing about this is that we can do this migration in either direction. So it allows you to do very quickly test out a migration to NVMe to see what that sort of a conversion can do from a performance standpoint. And if you need to, very quickly roll that NVMe namespace back into a LUN to give you a means to roll back out of that change if you so desire. Very powerful and a great way to increase the adoption of NVMe. The next enhancement is around environments that have very large file counts. If you've ever deleted a large folder of, of, of a, a large number of files, you've probably seen the little animation of those files being dragged to recycle bin sit there for a very extended period of time. What's actually happening behind the covers is your machine, your client, is, is issuing commands to delete those files one by one. And each one of those requests is a metadata command that goes across the network from your client to the NAS server. This can take a very long period of time and, and generates a lot of traffic on the NAS server itself. So with ONTAP 9.11.1, we've implemented a way for the ONTAP administrator to create a NetApp recycle bin within a directory. Now that's a, a, a recycle bin that allows end users using their clients, Windows or, or Linux or Unix, to actually drag a, an entire directory. Rather than deleting a directory, they do a move of that directory into this recycle bin. That's a single metadata command because you're essentially just changing the name of the directory or changing the location of the directory from where it was into that NetApp recycle bin. Then behind the scenes, ONTAP then goes through and asynchronously unlinks each of those files and deletes them, massively reducing the amount of traffic going from your client machine to the NAS server. It takes load off the NAS server and frees up your client machine to do other things. Really nice enhancement to have for those environments that have high file counts. The next high performance aspect is related to A time updates. So what is an A time update? Well, that's a way that we can track the last access time of a file, when it was last read or written to. Now, this gets you, this attribute gets used for a number of different things. Um, backup software may use uh, a time in order to determine whether or not that file should be scanned. Maybe there's changes to be done, and it should determine if that file should be backed up again. Uh, other clients use access time in order to do archiving, when a file may be pulled off of higher performance storage and archive for a given reason. However, with uh, FlexCache, which is our ability to accelerate file systems across remote locations to basically um, let remote users still have very high performance access to file shares, typically we had to disable A time. Now that was done for a few reasons. One is if the A time is earlier on the origin, that would invalidate the remote cache and that would force the, the remote caches to pull data across the WAN more frequently than they really should. And second, um, if a re read happened at the remote location, that wouldn't necessarily get propagated back to the origin, and therefore the A time on the origin wasn't reflective. However, all that's fixed within ONTAP 9.11.1, and now A time is fully supported with FlexCache environments. If a file is read at a remote location, that access time is updated and then propagated back to the origin. If a 
uh, origin is updated, um, that does not invalidate the cache and doesn't force a reflush out of, of data to those remote locations. Uh, really nice enhancements for customers that are running geographically distributed file shares, which has increasingly happened with ONTAP being deployed in cloud deployments around the world. Let's shift gears a little bit and talk about deployment flexibility. A couple of big enhancements in here in ONTAP with this latest release. The first of which is enhancements into ONTAP S3. So we introduced ONTAP S3 back in ONTAP 9.8, and we've seen a steady uptake in uh, S3 deployments or, or clients using ONTAP for object deployments. Particularly, it's ideal for, for smaller environments where maybe I have one or two applications that just need a little bit of object storage. Um, ONTAP is able to carve off very small amounts of, of object, allowing customers to, to satisfy those object needs on, on a small scale. It's also very highly performant. So for ONTAP, we don't really store objects or files or blocks, you know, we store data. And so that allows our object deployments to be very, very fast, um, effectively as fast as file shares, which is high performance in the object world. So we've seen a real increase in customers using ONTAP for primary object uh, uses. However, some of those applications looking to use object as a primary store are looking for some advanced functionality with an object. And one that we're adding specifically for this latest release of ONTAP is object versioning. This allows developers and, and applications to, rather than just simply overwrite a previous version of an object, they can choose instead to version it. And this allows applications to have the ability to roll back in time to a previous known version, whether you want to have a recovery point within the application or just have some data protection able to roll back to a previously known object. Um, greater, uh, great amount of flexibility in, in, the, in the code and a great addition to our ONTAP uh, protocols. Something else we added in this release as well is an increase in the S3 APIs themselves. There's a number of things we could do with, with S3 on ONTAP, but it required our own ONTAP REST APIs. And for applications that are written for all types of S3, they wouldn't necessarily know to make a call to ONTAP REST APIs. So now we can do things such as create buckets or delete buckets all within the S3 API itself, increasing the supportability of, of applications with ONTAP S3 natively. And the final major enhancement in ONTAP 9.11.1 is some enhancements around our SVM data mobility. So this was first introduced a version ago in ONTAP 9.10, which is the ability to move a storage virtual machine, which of course in the file serving world is more than just the data. It's the data along with the permissions, the directory structure, um, essentially everything that makes up a file server, um, including all of the mounts and shares. The ability to move that storage virtual machine from one cluster to another completely non-disruptively. Now we started in, in, in 9.10.1 with NFS shares and relatively small clusters in the data center. So an enhancement specifically with the 9.11.1 release is the ability to support larger clusters, so up to six node clusters, and the ability to um, optionally choose how you want those volumes laid out when you move that across. This is ideal if I'm doing a tech refresh or some data shuffling, or even just balancing workloads. I maybe want to move a, a, an application or a tenant that's on my cluster to a different cluster. And now I can choose when I do that move, how their data is laid out on that alternate cluster. And all this is done non-disruptively with NFS shares. We've also added support for external key servers. So if I'm using an external key server, um, there's no modifications or repairs need to be done after the move. All of this happens transparently and non-disruptive to the NFS clients. So there you go. There's some major enhancements for ONTAP 9.11.1 in the realm of, of, of high performance workloads and uh, deployment flexibility. Join me for part three, where we finish off the quick overview of ONTAP 9.11.1. Hope to see you then. Thanks.